Pastor Jason. Good morning, church. It's good to have you here. There ain't nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We had a Amen. Holy Ghost move here this morning, and such a blessing. I know you guys won't be seeing this till tonight, but, you know, like, their campus is open. <laughs> there ain't nothing like being in person. So, but we, we appreciate those of you who are watching online. We thank you for all your faithfulness and your tithes and your offering. Um, you can continue to support the church by giving to Zelly, and that's a church email address. Or you can um, mail it in at P.O. Box 1540, um, San Jacinto, 92581. You can also text to give, or you could um, text to give 843-21. And on that one, you can specify where your um, tithes or your offering, or you can give to the project fund. Those are the three categories we have right now. So it will be on your screen, so we thank you for that. I do have a couple announcements. Um, next Sunday, we don't have a slide for this because um, I just decided it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> next Sunday, we are going to have communion. Amen. So uh, Amen. for those of you who are watching online, please um, prepare your element so that when you do watch, you can take communion with us. We will go ahead and record that. Uh, for those of you that are here, um, I just want to encourage you to come with come with some things on your heart before you give communion. You know, um, I was reading this uh, article from a, a health person and um, she was saying that it's time to reset. And she was saying, as much as I eat healthy all year long, from Thanksgiving until the new year, I kind of indulge and I need to reset. And when I was reading that, I was thinking, you know what? That's the same way, like in our Christian walk, we go all year long and then we hit a point to where we're so focused on everything else and we get our focus off of the Lord, you know, and the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it really just um, stuck with me. And um, so I also want to encourage you to come with in mind things that you're believing God for or also whatever God's telling you. Like I said last week when I preached, there's a specific area God wants me to work on in this next year. And so um, when I take my communion, that's when I'm going to lay that down and not just lay it down and that I'm also going to fast. And I encourage you guys to think of something in your life. I'm not even talking food. I'm, I'm fasting a distraction in my life. There is something that I keep picking up and it's distracting me from doing what I need to do. It's distracting me from schoolwork. It's distracting me from my devotions. It's, it's a distraction. So I'm going to lay that down for 21 days. So um, a lot of churches will do the Daniel fast. You know, um, Jensen Franklin, who is a Church of God pastor, usually a lot of Church of God churches jump in on that. But I'm just going to say to you, pray and ask the Lord what it is for you personally to lay down. So... Uh, mine is not food, although I am fasting a food product, too, that um, has a hold on my life, which is sugar. <laughs> I'm back to eating cookies for breakfast when I should not be doing that. So I'm doing a two-thing fast. I'm fasting a distraction, and I'm fasting sugar. So, um, But pray and ask the Lord. Don't do it because somebody else does it. Do it because it's what God tells you to do, right? Because it's between you and and the Lord and whatever he tells you to do. So I want to encourage you to do that. Get your communion ready. Have something in mind okay. and think of something that pray and ask the Lord, not just you think of something. If it, if we do it, we'll, we'll pick the easiest thing to give up, right? We're not going to pick the hard thing. But a fast, it is a sacrifice. It's not something easy to do, you know. So it's something that is kind of, it stretches us. And we have to depend on God during that time. So think of something or pray and ask the Lord to help you. Think of something that is distracting you from him and um, fast that for 21 days. So I'm starting January 4th. So our service is January 3rd with communion and I'm starting my fast January 4th. I encourage you to, to also do the same thing. So at this time, we have the honor of having Reverend Jason bring the word to us today. He's got a word for us that's just for today, that's timely for today. And it's The Journey by Reverend Jason Wagner. Thank you, Pastor Don. Thank you, congregation. Those that are watching later tonight, praise God. Hope you enjoy the message, praise God. So this is my end of the year message. 
and uh, that's been an honor too. I've been able to do the end of the year message for quite a few years and had some good ones. Mm -hmm. So time was ticking away with one of them and I can't remember all of them, but you know, praise God. It was some good messages though. I'd have to go back and look at my notes and stuff. <laughs> but as you see the journey, not, not the group journey, but the journey that we've been on this year and what we're going into next year in 2021. Before I uh, get into my message and everything and pray, I wanted to go into an intro of what we've been through this year. You know, throughout the year of 2020, it was a recap of what had happened. The first thing I we saw was the ball drop in Times Square with thousands and thousands of people in the streets of New York. Second, you know, uh, the great super, superstar Kobe Bryant passed away, you know, from the Lakers, uh, just in a plane crash along with eight other people, including his daughter. And that was quite a, you know, shock to the world. Many people knew him as a great star in basketball. Uh, the next thing, the Super Bowl, which also at Rock Stadium in Tampa, Florida, had over 62,000 fans. And then in March, he says the 16th, 14th, 15th, but it was around that time. I remember going to see, and I still believe, the Jeremy Camp story uh, with Maria and after church in the afternoon. And then the next day, everything just shut down, you know, and... It shut down. We went into lockdown with COVID-19, yeah. you know, and then, and of course, uh, our, one of our biggest losses was in uh, April, uh, right around uh, the, the, the Passover. We lost Pastor John Flowers, uh, our pastor, who went into glory on April 9th, literally during Passover. He passed into glory, heaven's home. And then later on in the summer, we dealt with racial justice between, sus, you know, between criminals and cops still going on you know i saw another one recently and uh that was during the summer which led to rioting and loitering remember when i preached on uh uh pentecost sunday and i don't remember what the message was but the, anyways that evening everything started breaking out here him and, and san Bernardino, on just you know diamond effect everywhere and people were just taking advantage of getting whatever they could get because they were just you know people from all over the place coming in and doing evil stuff and then we go into, uh, after the summer, you know, we had some great losses. We had, uh, we had Joey Rodriguez, the youngest Joey, pass away. And uh, praise God for Michelle McCain. I'm going to tell you that right now, that you were available, that you right. won him to the Lord before right. he passed on in this right. world. That's the greatest thing we can do is win someone to the Lord before they pass on. Right. Because we don't know where we would go after that. So it's like, it's either heaven or hell. And it's like... I believe he's in heaven, Hallie, because he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Michelle McCain. And then we lost uh, Joe Mendez, you know, Joseph Mendez. Now I believe he can see the glory of God because he had a problem seeing. And uh, praise God, he can see now. Hallelujah. Right. He's up there with many others that he knew. Praise God. And then, well, of course, we uh, I just was told that we lost Justine's son, Louis. And uh, so... Another one we want to acknowledge, you know, but this was all around, you know, in, in right before we went into the fall. And then we had in sports, again, we had the Lakers and the Dodgers both win the, the titles, championships, which they both haven't done together since uh, 1988. And then we move on, and uh, it says the COVID got worse. Well, first we had the electoral election, which we're still dealing with right now. Uh, Counter Biden is elected president, still going on to side before inaugural seat on January 20th or, you know, 2021. And then COVID got out of control. Hostels been filling up. Thousands of people started dying around the world and churches. Praise God for churches that had a, uh, were allowed to have indoor service on right. a limited Amen. level because we won that in court. Yep. And praise God for that. So hallelujah there. Come so God said, hey, you know, let's have church. And then uh, we have our first vaccine uh, instructed to health workers and convalescent hospitals and facilities of elderly people on December 17th. And then on December 21st, we got to experience something after over an 800 years, we saw the Christmas star appear. That was quite a sight. Way to go, because we, 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 we were copying that picture. We, you know, we loved it. My daughter loved it. Because she didn't know if she even copied it. She says, yeah, look what Pastor Don looks like. It looks very similar. So you guys got it. So praise God. And so the star appeared in the sky over 800 years ago. We got to see that. And the last one that hasn't happened yet before we go out of this year, if you haven't seen it, 
It's like a pre-Great Awakening setup. It's going to be in Los Angeles, down on Suzu, uh, downtown uh, Los Angeles. A revival beginning on December 31st. Starts at 9 o'clock. Register if you want to go. And that's the close of uh, the journey of this year that we've been through. And now I want to get into my message, praise God, because that's what we went through this year. We went through a lot, you know. And it's kind of hard to understand, you know, death, you know. You know, but God is the giver of life and death. He's the one that decides who comes and goes. So, you know, besides people leaving early in life. Right. And so my message, I told you, was the journey. And if you have your Bibles or your phones to follow along, Romans chapter 1. I said, wow, he's going in Romans 1? <laughs> people hate Romans 1 that are not of God, believe me. But I'm not going on that part, praise God, because this is how about the journey, hallelujah. Okay. And so Romans 1 chapter 8, verse... Uh, chapter 1, verse 8 is what I got. Yep, 8. And it says this. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For, this, for God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. Without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord God. The journey that we've been through, Lord God. We are thankful that we're still alive, yes. that we're not sick, and that those out there that could say that too, Lord God. We got to take our life seriously, Lord God, and seriously before you, Lord God. We got to plead the blood of Jesus for our protection. We got to live safely, Lord God. We got to walk smart and be alert, Lord God, and watchful, Lord God. And Lord, we pray, Lord God, as we go into the new year of this journey, Lord God, that you show me in your word, Lord God. We are just looking forward to what you have for us, Lord God. And we know it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit that we will operate, that we will function, that we will move forward in this year's journey ahead in 2021, Lord God, we give you all the praise and glory and honor what you're going to do in this new year coming up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I read that, it's faith to everyone. It's forward your faith to everyone as the first thing you want to go into journey in the new year. I mean, I've already got stuff coming up. Uh, I'm supposed to do something in Hollywood in January and in February in uh, Newport Beach. Marching for Christ. I mean, things are already being thrown at me. Looking forward to that. And I remember when I was out there last time in November, I was running around saying, Whosoever, are you a whosoever? And that's Romans 10, 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So if you call upon the name of the Lord and you really mean it, then you're saved, hallelujah, because that's that's you calling the Lord into your life, hallelujah. But I'll, don't make it a deathbed repentance, but just definitely call upon him before that time. Hallelujah. So... We are here to forward. My first thing I wanted to bring out is, is that we're going forward. Amen. And it's going forward. We're a faith to everyone. Amen. Our faith is one Lord, one baptism, and our one Lord, hallelujah. It is the faith that we stand on, and we take that to the world, hallelujah. And, and, and in this Bible, it talks about also uh, when you're taking this whosoever, praise God, it's not just taking it to the world because a lot of us can't make it to the world except through media. But your next door neighbor, like like Sally, the grocery stores, the Walmart, stuff like that, you know, we can take it to those places, hallelujah, the gospel. In any way that we can do one-on-one -on -one or, or reach out to the, the world if we get an opportunity to do some kind of missions or some kind of preaching in another world. And so it's the go ye. The Bible talks about go ye and preach this gospel to all the whole world. It says that in Mark 16, 15, of course, Matthew 28, 19, which is the Great Commission. It is our Great Commission to go ye. So we know our neighbors, you know, we, we talked to a few of them. We handed out, you know, popcorn, you know, of last week. That was awesome. It's just any way we can interact with them because I know a lot of people are afraid. COVID, get away from me, Holly. Six feet distance. Of course, they're going to use that if they truly aren't saved or, or not reaching for salvation. But there's going to come a time when we're going to be able to reach out. And so, you know, we're going to do these things in order to be going forward, hallelujah, is taking our faith to the world, hallelujah. And as we move on, we're going to need this, you know, and I believe this is the book of Acts, hallelujah, that we are a book of action in the book of Acts. We're writing our story, hallelujah, right now, Acts 29, they always say, after Acts 28. And Acts chapter 1, you'll turn there unless you know it by heart, but 
Acts chapter 1 talks about what we need to be able to go forward, hallelujah, because we can have the word, you know, and we can have the love in the heart, but a lot of people are timid and shy, you know, right. and this is what we need. Acts 1, 8 says, but you shall receive power, hallelujah, you shall receive power from high. After you get saved, you want to get filled with the Spirit, Hallie. And Amen. when you can get filled with the Spirit, because I'm not talking about, you know, okay, I'm Spirit-filled, but I still get timid and shy. But we got to stir up the gift. Right. Stir up the stir gift, Hallie. He taught about Shonda. Right. You start Amen. speaking in tongues, whatever, praise and worship, you know. Anything to stir up your spirit. Your physical man to get your spirit going high so God can start working through you. And then you shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and all the uttermost part of the earth. we got to stir it up, Hallelujah. We are and we need to be that book of actions that moves forward and doesn't look back. That's right. Not what happened on this year, Hallelujah. But we are wanting to go forward, Hallelujah. Because we are that book of action. What am I talking about? Like the Isuzu. They laid hands sick in the middle of the streets. People were healed, Hallelujah. People were blind. They would begin to see. Just like the works of Jesus. It was happening in Isuzu Street Revival in 1906. Praise God. And so what a time we want that to be again, Hallelujah. If we will be that church, you know, as a body here and throughout. And so you look back and see what happened this year, and we, but we also have been using this year, continue to use media like Facebook, Instagram, Zoom, and et cetera. A one-on-one -on -one ministry and outreach events to draw many to Christ. So we do the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, our neighbor, whatever, you know, invite somebody in, in, in church that could get saved, however it may be, and then outreach is where we can reach many to Christ, Hallelujah. You know, just like what I do in Hollywood or, or, or what Greg Lloyd does at Harvest Crusades and the things that we can do to reach our communities, praise God. I know we're looking forward to doing that. So it's coming, hallelujah. Right. And so and then we want to equip the church with witnessing tools. Yeah. Of course, the Holy Bible, whether it be on your phone or physically in your hand, tracks and the knowledge and the truth and spirit. We've got to have those things. We've got to have education. Our our pastor here is going to school so that she can truly be a accredited minister. And Robbie and, and Jen and, and Mary and the different ones, they're all going to school so they can be accredited and they're equipped in their selves so they can be witnesses, hallelujah, in such a stronger way and understand the word a lot better, you know, and it's awesome that we're doing that because we want to study and show ourselves approved of the gospel, how it need not to be ashamed and be truly a workman of this ministry. And so we want to do these things because we're equipped in ourselves for this witnessing. We're not just going to go out there and just start, hey, you know, Jesus, hallelujah. If you don't, you're going to go to hell. I've seen people do that. It scares <laughs> heck. It gets them mad and everything. You know, if you've seen those tracks that Rodney Howard put, put out, hey, do you know someone loves you? You know, it, it, it brings out, breaks the ice, right. you know, and that someone cares for you. And, and you know, do you know Jesus? It'll come out eventually, you know, if, if you know, and it's it's awesome. It's a great, it's a great icebreaker if you don't know how to actually talk to people about Jesus. And so those are good tools to use. But we want to be alert and we want to be watchful and overcome all these things, you know, because... A lot's still happening. We're dealing with the six feet distancing from people, the fear that's going on. And so we don't know how long this is going to go on. We just got to just be creative as the Lord shows us and we just be a witness any way we can. You know, so that's what we want to do as we uh, move forward. And, uh, you know, we're working in the fields like an evangelist. We're putting our full service forth. I mean, the things that Pastor Don and John have done with, with whether it be Halloween or, or, or Easter or Christmas, they're just little things that can turn into something big later on, you know. And Pastor Robbie and Jim, what they do with the youth. I mean, these things are going to get big later. These are just the beginnings, hallelujah. Amen. And they're doing their job, hallelujah, as evangelists and making full service of their ministry in the Lord. And that's what we want to be doing, hallelujah. And then the second thing I want to bring out is upward. Upward, basically, we're dealing with we need the anointing and the connection from God to reach the world. The Bible talks about that in Luke 14. He has anointed 
me hallelujah yeah. he is anointed jesus and we are his you know anointing of, of the anointed one hallelujah so we follow what christ's example was we allow the holy spirit to anoint us so we can connection with god to reach the world it ain't just flesh in and love and all that but it's the spirit it's the spirit working through us it's the holy spirit working through us because we want the holy spirit to woo men not us hallelujah right. We don't want to be like when you've almost persuaded me. We want them to be persuaded by the Spirit, hallelujah. We want them to be wooed in by the Spirit. It's not us, hallelujah. We're just a vessel, hallelujah, that's being used. But we get anointed. We get a connection from God, hallelujah. And we also need in 1 Corinthians, if you'll turn there, chapter 12. We need the anointing because the anointing makes us strong. And what does the anointing do? It doesn't just break the yoke. It destroys the yoke of bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the anointing does. Hallelujah. So Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Is it 1 Corinthians? Yep. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. For one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom. Another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Another faith, the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. And to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one, same, same self spirit, divided to every man severally as he will. The whole point I wanted to bring out about this, there's three breakdowns in here and three of them and the first three are something revealed so you're when you're dealing with wisdom it's something revealed and knowledge and faith and then you deal with something done like the gifts of healing and miracles and 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 you move into the last one which is something said so you have something revealed out of three of them you have something done out of three of them because there's nine gifts of the spirit and then the last three are something said, which deals with interpretation, prophecy, and all that stuff. So praise God. So something I'd share with you. But it's, you know, it's things that we want to operate in is the gifts of the Spirit. We all have them. We just have to allow God to work through us. Hallelujah. Right. Some work stronger. Some work stronger in faith. Some work better in, uh, you know, discerning of spirits, you know, or whatever, or healing, you know, laying hands on the sick and special healing, hallelujah, for people. All these gifts that we can have and use, and we do it in our church. Let's use it outside these four walls, too. That's what the anointing does, hallelujah. Yeah. It destroys the yoke, hallelujah. And that can bring healing to someone. That can you know, cause you to reveal something. Like when he was praying, hallelujah, I'm sure that happens even when he's out and about. But sometimes we have to get the spirit to do those things. Right. So we want to be anointed, hallelujah. And that's an upward thing. It's letting the anointing come down on us, hallelujah, like it did Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then he went and he reached the world in his capacity where he was, you know, and then went to the cross and rose again. What a time that he could reach the world through that, even though he was only in a certain area at the time. But he reached the world by what he did. Hallelujah. What Jesus did do. Praise God. And so you dealt with going forward. You dealt with upward. Now we're going to close into after we've gone forward, we moved upward, and you know, where so God can anoint us, so God can strengthen us, because we can't do it on our own. You know, like I said, it's not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. You know, we deal with after we've moved into 2021, we've gone forward, we've gone upward, we've reached out to God. What else is there after that? We're talking about a great awakening. We're talking about revival. The Bible's spoken of in the prophet Joe and, and Joe's bar, you know, how I call it, you know, where, you know, I'll pour my spirit on all flesh. You know, your sons and daughters will prophesy and your, your old men will dream dreams and young men will visions and all that stuff, your handmaidens and all that. All that is going to take place pretty soon and some of it's probably already beginning. But as this is the beginning of the last days, we have a destiny. And that destiny is what? To bring souls to heaven. How? By the love of God. Right. Miracles for them to believe. Signs and wonders will follow them that believe. And fear of going to hell. You know, some, you know, are moved by fear to get to heaven. And however it works, praise God, we want them to get to heaven. And so... 
Proverbs 11.30 says, He who wins souls is wise. If you had any of those pins, you know, that Pastor Steve had made. It, it's We want to be wise and win souls. Hallelujah. Whether it's a few or whether it's thousands. Whatever God puts in your path. You know, praise God. Win them. I was on the internet last night talking to some guy that's open to the gospel, you know. And, and I've prayed with him and everything. And so... God's working because my daughter is always on the internet just reaching out to so many people, you know, through these different media sources that she gets me involved, you know, because me being a minister. <laughs> so praise God, you know, and then, uh, you know, we bring souls to heaven, you know, with these three ways, you know, with love and miracles and fear, you know, of going to hell. Because I don't think anybody wants to go to hell if they really know what hell's like. I don't even, it ain't a party right. where you can just do this and that with your friends and drink and have a good time and smoke pot or whatever. It, it is a burning forever and ever, everlasting fire that is prepared for the devil and his angels. Never planned for us. It's those that follow after that life. And so we dwell together in the second thing. They come together to get along, join together in prayer and worship. So we, we dwell together in the body of Christ and we come together so that we can join in unity because that's what a community really is all about is unity. Hallelujah. It's funny how that word's in there. We commune in the Holy Spirit. We commune with the body of Christ and it brings unity. And so we come together in prayer and worship, which very well helps with unity. Because then we get what God wants. Like she said, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added unto you. And worship. Oh, worship just takes you into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you truly are in worship, hallelujah. When you get into worship, I believe that can bring your healing. That yeah. can uh, take off that depression. Whatever yeah. you're going through, hallelujah. Worship the Lord, hallelujah. Because he wants to touch you. He wants to make you free, hallelujah, Amen. from those things. So... Psalms 33, 133, one, I think talks about a little bit about just dwelling together. Should have probably read that first, but praise God. I'm going to read it because, so it's the book of Psalms, 133, verse 1. Oh, really good. I don't know why it keeps jumping. That's right. I'm looking at Proverbs and I'm trying to get the song. I'm already dealt with Proverbs. Hallelujah. It says, Behold, how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. See, there it is. Just wanted to show you the scripture too. I didn't want to just say something that sounded good and maybe it was rainbow from heaven, but the word says it. It says that we are to dwell together in unity. Oh, wow. What, what a time. And so, in the, and that was in the Old Testament. And in the, in the New Testament, the book of Acts, as I told you, the book of Action, the book of Acts chapter 4, this is when they were adding unto the church mightily because the Holy Spirit got such a hold of them after the, you know, Acts 2, uh, 1 through 4, when the mighty Russian wind and the fires of cloven tongues laid upon them. They were set ablaze to, to preach the gospel like never before. Chapter 4 of the book of Acts, and it's verse 32 to 35. And it says this, praise God. As I climb right in there. Thirty-two through thirty-five says this, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. What a thing to testify of. Our Lord has risen, hallelujah. They're looking at it like, no, he was on that cross and he died and he was buried. No, our Lord was risen. The stone was rolled away and he's walking among men, hallelujah. Now, now this is, of course, after he's probably already gone, but they were testifying of his resurrection, though. And so witness of resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace upon them all. Neither was any among them that lacked for as many were possessors of lands, houses, had sold them, brought the price of things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. So basically, we're all in one accord, lacking nothing. 
That's going to come a time when we're going to prosper so much. The wealth of the wicked is going to be laid up for the just. We're going to have all the resources we need. We're going to need have all the things that we need to, to function here on this earth. Our livelihood and everything. Just like when we had the pantry and people needed food. That was a blessing. And, and different things that we're going to have, I believe, you know, the churches are going to have. And so in one accord, though, that unity but lacking nothing. We don't need nothing, hallelujah. And God's going to make sure of that if we'll trust him. And that's what the disciples dealt with they, 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 and, and the apostles and all that. They were lacking nothing. They accordingly gave out to someone that needed a house or whatever. I mean, what an awesome thing. Or, or finances to take care of what they were continuing to do. And so we have that destiny, I told you, to win souls and come together. And be in a time where we're going to be in one accord and everyone's not going to be lacking anything. We're going to know what Amen. each person needs and it'll be there for them. Because as this place fills up, that's going to happen. How do I believe that? How oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And so as I come to a close, the book of Revelations is where I'm going to finish. That's where it all finishes and where Jesus Christ is revealed in the book of Revelation. And it's going to be chapter 21, 7 through 8. 21, yeah, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, and the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars have their part in the lake which is burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So, yes, there is a heaven. Yes, there is a hell. It is the final destination for anybody because everyone's going to acknowledge their creator, whether they believe or not. Everyone's going to say, Jesus is Lord. Even Satan, he's going to say, Jesus is Lord. Because no one is above their creator. And we are going to bow our knee and our hearts and say, Jesus is Lord. But us, we're as his Savior. Many are going to be as his judge. And so he has to execute judgment, praise God. And those that fall, Satan and his angels will fall with him into the lake of fire. The believers is heaven. Hell is the sinners is hell. It is the final destination. But we have a place that we look forward to taking many to. It's called heaven. Hallelujah. God's home is the abiding place. And he's bringing heaven to earth after the, you know, after the tribulation. And what a time it's going to be for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And that's the destination that anyone can have. If anyone out there that don't know Jesus that's watching this, you can have the destination of heaven. All you have to say is, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And Lord Jesus, I believe. That you died on that cross. Amen. And as you died on that cross, you forgave me of my sins. You washed me. You cleansed me with your precious blood. And Lord Jesus, I believe that when you died on that cross, that you rose again so that I could have life. And Lord, I ask that you come into my heart and give me life. And Lord, that I'm going to live for you as a born again Christian. And on my way to heaven, and Lord Jesus, I'm going to live for you all the days of my life. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you blew that prayer, don't be ashamed. Tell someone. We have the church number. Uh, it's 1951-654-7700. Uh, uh, you can even just give your comments as you're watching, and uh, we can get in touch with you however you want to do it. But praise God. Get ready for the journey that's ahead, and we thank you all. God bless you.